So we talked about um, how emissions are formed and also the policies that governments have to um, limit uh, the amount of emissions that are being produced. So in this section, we're going to talk about how we can actually manage the emissions that are being formed, how we can control them. Um, there's several ways of obviously different technologies. And again, I'm going to come at this from a uh, automotive uh, point of view, given that um, the emissions from uh, the transport sector obviously under a lot of scrutiny at the minute. So in terms of uh, the emission targets for automotive, um, we talked about ultrafine um, particles being produced uh, from gasoline engines. As in this is a consequence of um, the uh, engine designers trying to limit the amount of CO2 that's being produced and move into more and more leaner mixtures and actually undesirably producing these ultrafines. So as a consequence of this, um, a particular measurement program was commissioned by the European Joint Research Centre uh, to look at this. And what um, they basically concluded, and we'll talk more about um, automotive emissions in a second le lecture, so I'm just going to kind of touch on it here. Um, basically, they've moved away from um, the measurement of mass to the measurement by number. So if you remember, if we look back at the other section, we said that the mass went down, which is great, but the numbers went up. So it's now aiming to limit the number and the ultrafines that are being produced. So instead of a mass per kilometre, the new measurement is saying that you're allowed to um, produce 6 times 10 to the 11 um, particles per kilometre. And th the mass is kind of taken into account in this um, this number here because because they can they know that for the for the engine um, for the given um, air to fuel ratios where it's likely to be running. They, go on, they roughly know what the size will be. So if you time the size by that number, then the mass should be, then the old mass target shouldn't be exceeded. But now you are starting to limit the number and hence the ultrafines, which are kind of doing a lot of damage um, to, to the health of the population. So that's how you can manage, um, oh sorry, limit um, particles not that's not how you can control it but that's the new limit for the particulates um, uh, in the automotive sector um, how do you actually control the emissions well in terms of um, carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons and NOx as well you can either use a two-way uh, catalyst or a three-way catalyst and that's obviously referring to the number of gases um, that it's controlling and the way that catalytic converters um, work is they have um, a precious metal on a substrate. And um, if you don't know what a um, catalyst is, so catalytic, catalytic is referring to the catalyst. And the catalyst is something that plays a part in reaction. So it speeds up or um, helps a reaction to take place, but actually plays no, but doesn't chemically play a part in that reaction okay so it's inert from the process but it helps the process to take place so the way it works is um, it helps uh, reduce NOx for, um, to oxygen and nitrogen who oxidize CO to carbon dioxide and also oxidize and burn hydrocarbons to CO2 in water so this is how a three-way catalyst works it's um, take getting rid of the NOx, uh, carbon dioxide and unburned hydrocarbons. But three-way catalysts have to operate in a very narrow band of equivalence ratios, quite close to stoichiometry. Now that's fine for um, gasoline um, or spark ignition engines because they tend to run uh, quite close to um, stoichiometry anyway. But Diesel engines tend to run very lean, and so it's outside the operating window of a catalytic converter for the NOx. You can still treat the um, carbon monoxide and unburned hydrocarbons with a two-way catalyst, but you need to treat the NOx a different way. Um, so the way that the um, NOx is treated um, in a diesel engine is it uses what's called a selective catalytic reduction, or SCR. And... What this basically is, is it uses an aqueous urea solution and that solution is injected into the exhaust and it basically reacts with the 
um, NOx to form nitrogen, water and carbon um, dioxide. This was first implemented onto um, uh, uh, large heavy duty vehicles, so buses and trucks, that kind of thing. If you've ever been driving past them on the motorway, you might have noticed a blue cap, um, uh, you know, on the vehicle. And that's to fill it up with something that's called AdBlue. And AdBlue is the trade name for this urea aqueous urea solution. So when, a so when these trucks pull up into the um, petrol station, not only will they fill their tanks with diesel, but they also fill this other tank with AdBlue to ensure that the, the um, uh, SCR is operating properly and it's not going above the, the limits. Now I'm starting to see SCR coming into um light duty vehicles so passenger car vehicles most modern diesels have um an scr system on them now and you can either top it up yourself or it's kind of been designed to go between um uh services um so you'll get topped up at the service but we talked earlier about um diesels um producing a lot of particulate matter because they burn with this diffusion type flame um, so they have a lot of soot and the way that that's removed from the exhaust is basically with a sieve you know just in principle it's nothing more complicated than that so and it's called a diesel particulate filter so you can see now the exhaust um, treatment system for a diesel vehicle is actually you know quite complicated now so you, you've got the engine and all the particulates are coming out of that so you've got particulate matter carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons, NOx. So first of all, you've got your oxidation catalyst. So that gets rid of your CO um, and your unburnt hydrocarbons. So they're treated. Then it goes through the diesel particulate filter. Obviously, you remove out the PMs. And then you um, add in your urea to treat your NOx till eventually you just should just have carbon dioxide, water, and nitrogen coming out of the exhaust. Um, so just talking a little bit about, because um, we've talked about um, sulfur dioxide being an exhaust gas, um, sorry, an emission that you want to treat. So to say this isn't a problem for uh, the automotive sector, but more for the power generation sector, depending on the fossil fuel that you're burning. And this can be removed with quite a simple process called um, flue gas desulfurization. And um, because um, sulfur dioxide is an acidic gas, it can be reacted with an alkaline material um, to give you, you know, salt and water. So basically you react with, um, so you've got your alkaline um, uh, material, which is sort of a limestone slurry. That's reacted with a gas and it um, gives you a nice stable solid, which you can collect and actually used um, either in the um, construction industry or can be used as a preservative in the food industry and water. So it's quite easy to um, catch the sulfur dioxide from uh, power generation um, plants. Okay, so that um, concludes this um, lecture on emissions. If you have any comments or queries, then please come and see me or leave them below. Thanks. Bye.